Hi, my name is Anne. If you're new here, I'm a fourth year PhD student studying nanomedicine and drug delivery at the University of British Columbia. In today's video, I wanted to dive into how you can increase your chances of getting into grad school. In particular, this video is best for undergrad students that know that they already want to do research. They're certain about doing grad school and they're just looking for ways to amp up their application to increase the chances of getting in. Just to preface, I'm not an expert. I'm not an academic advisor. I don't know anything about the back end of admission processes and stuff for grad school. Like I just am here to share my experience getting into this grad program at UBC. I'm in my fourth year PhD. I did my bachelor's here also at UBC in chemistry. And then I started the master's program in this faculty right after I graduated. And then a year after that, I transitioned to the PhD program. So I don't have a master's degree. I just have a bachelor's degree. I think the most common question that I get asked is what kind of experiences do PIs usually look for when they're seeking out grad students? Knowing my boss and knowing my application and what got me in, I think the thing that really stood out from my application is that I had internship experiences in the same field as the one I'm in now. So I did two co-op terms. For my first eight month period, I was doing synthesis at a company now called Solve in the States and that really helped with my synthetic skills. And for my second term, so for the second eight months, I did an internship at it's now called Evonic, and that was where I was exposed to the whole field of nanotechnology. So I believe these two experiences really boosted up my application because my grades are not great, and that was probably the thing that I was like most self-conscious of, but because I had demonstrated that I have the experience that is quite valuable, like I think that's how I got the interview, <laughs> at least with, with my current boss. In particular, from what I understand, PIs like it when and you have demonstrated that you have sought out like different types of experiences, different types of lab work, you've had hands-on experience outside of your required courses. And one really great way to do this is to actually just seek out labs within your university that you think might be of interest to you when you're in your third or fourth year or as early as possible really like if you're already thinking about doing grad school when you're in your first or second year of undergrad like good for you you're really thinking far ahead get yourself into a lab just to explore it's easier to get a volunteer position in a lab as an undergrad than getting a graduate position so you can send out emails or just talk to your professors after classes you're, you're offering your time and that's free labor for them and in exchange like they know that you don't have much experience so they can provide that experience for you and that's super super valuable that's my first tip is to just try your best to reach out to the community around you and really get your hands dirty make mistakes learn ask dumb questions and really just have fun during that process because it's, it's a pretty exciting stage to be exploring what you like and what you don't like and you can learn quite a bit by just volunteering okay so the next tip that i have is to really think about who you're going to ask for those recommendation letters because those recommendation letters are definitely required at least for UBC anyways and I can imagine like other grad programs as well so you can say the greatest things about yourself when you're writing your application and you should like you should really sell yourself when you're writing your application but it's even more valuable from a PI's perspective or like a potential boss's perspective to see what other bosses have to say about you I think it's key that you get into a good relationship with someone that's going to supervise you doing research rather than someone that has provided lectures or like marked your papers or, or marked your exams and such because those people can vouch for your intelligence and your grades but they can't vouch for how good you are holding a pipette or how good you are working with other people or, or how good you are uh, with critical thinking and like d demonstrated research potential so really think about who you're going to to ask for those references in order to build 
a meaningful relationship with these references and to build like a strong relationship with them it's best to start early so again it's great if you're in your third or fourth year of undergrad because like then you can really start to develop these relationships and find mentors that can help you with this process don't take these recommendation letters lightly because I believe PIs really look for that and they really value another researchers perspective or opinion about you because they know nothing else about you so that, that just makes sense networking is good definitely you'll hear over and over again but networking is key and it doesn't have to be artificial it could potentially feel a little bit fake sometimes but I believe if you're genuinely interested in something and you want to learn something there's always going to be people that know more than you are smarter than you and are kind enough to share the knowledge with you so naturally just talking about the things that you both share the same interest in would really result in a really good relationship and therefore a good recommendation letter just think about that as you are continuing with your academic career the next tip i have is to start looking for PIs really early, but don't reach out to them yet <laughs> because they have so many people reaching out to them every day. Apparently it's ridiculous. Like I've talked to my boss, I've talked to other PIs and a very common thing that I hear is that they get so many and they scan your email in like five to 10 seconds. And if you don't have what they're looking for, like they just won't reply. To me, that sounds a bit hurtful. Like having been on the other end, only having been on the other end, it's always just really intimidating to reach out in the first place but it kind of makes sense because they get so many in a day it's just not a good use of time to respond to everyone yes creep your pis that you're interested in like learn about their research but hold off on reaching out to them until you're ready to either ask for a volunteer position or present yourself and ask to learn more about their research with the intention of getting into their lab to do research just think about it and really be sure when you type out that email on the topic of creeping <laughs> <laughs> doing your research on the potential PIs that you might be interested in working for. Research papers are kind of difficult to read if you haven't really been trained in reading it or haven't had the experience to read it. I know for sure for me, fresh out of undergrad, the first bit of time when I was in my program, I had so much difficulty reading the research papers. With my boss's research papers, I was able to read it and comprehend it and really be interested and that's how I found out that this is a field that I want to be in is when I read his work I was like dang like I want to do that work I guess the tip here is yes don't reach out to the PI unless you're ready but do your research with the PIs and see how your brain responds to reading these papers because I think it's like a really good indicator of whether or not you would be interested in this particular field or in this particular lab because research labs, they tend to be very niche. For example, like the whole field of drug delivery is very broad, but then there's like a very specific aspect that you might like compared to something else that's also very specific, but that you're not interested in. So an example that I use is like, I really like drug release stuff. I really am interested interested in how fast a drug can leave a particle. I'm not so much interested in, for example, like the exact mechanism as to how it gets taken up in a cell because that's like a, a like cell biology and I'm not interested in that. Be able to distinguish like the different aspects of a research paper and of a field. As you're reading the research papers, I think one really useful thing that I wish I knew or thought of back then is if you're reading something and you don't understand it, you've never heard of it before likely there is a course on that topic that you could take in your undergrad so that you can increase your knowledge before you even get into the grad program an example that I will use is of course myself and hold on one sec my, my throat is just it's just mm. I'm getting like too excited. <laughs> when I was first reading my boss's papers, I didn't understand like a majority of the types of techniques or the types of assays that were going on. So I didn't know anything about cell biology. I didn't know anything about in vitro studies, like cell culture work. I didn't know anything about animal work. I did understand synthesis because like chemistry is my background. So anything chemical related, like I understood. If I were to go back, I could have 
have taken some cell biology courses or biology labs that really particularly deal with cell culture and stuff or even like immunology courses because there was some immunology in my boss's work in my boss's lab and that type of stuff so it doesn't necessarily have to be a course either it could also just be literally getting again going back to my previous point getting into a lab to volunteer and getting your hands on to some type of like research work for nanotechnology and nano delivery nanoparticle work in general i think courses that would have benefited me earlier is like any type of pharmacokinetic courses like cancer related courses to understand how cancer works maybe some statistics would have really helped i'm just trying to think back to my first year like what i was struggling most with was just like the the jargon and pharmacology would have been a good course for me to take too because that's really related to nano um, technology and nano delivery and stuff that's the tip there is to read the papers and to extract areas that you're not familiar of and try to translate that to courses that you can take to provide yourself with knowledge to gain knowledge in these areas my next tip is this is something that i didn't really have though but i think it would have boosted my application i don't know where people get the time of day to do this honestly like if i could go back i don't even think i would have that much time to do all of this because i'm just like i think i'm like an average student i'm not like stellar so if you're a stellar student that can manage juggling all of this stuff on top of your undergrad stuff is to do some type of leadership work because pis also really like to see leadership they like to see that you have the tendency to take initiatives on things doesn't necessarily have to be like a big president position or anything just just being on different clubs different committees being involved with the community around you show that you have interests too like outside of studying and outside of research that can really help with your application and help you to stand out all the while you still have to maintain your GPA to make sure that it's like at least like above the cutoff because I barely made the cutoff so I like made a list here of things that I should mention I believe that's everything that I had listed I'm hoping that this will be the first video of a series I want to start which is like how to get into grad school slash like how to prepare tips and tricks and such so this first video is really aimed at people that are quite far before starting to apply like quite new to this research stuff these are all things to think about in your undergrad and potentially after your undergrad when you're looking for areas to do research in or looking to improve your application if you have any more questions please let me know in the comments or reach out to me on instagram people have been doing that and i really appreciate it but with that good luck with everything you're gonna do great the fact that you're watching this video means that you are already doing great like you're already caring enough to do your research about this and best of luck i'll see you in the next one bye